Danielle Locklear was a vibrant, compassionate 15-year-old whose life was tragically cut short in 2014. Her story is one of love, loss, and the devastating impact of a relationship gone terribly wrong. Danielle Locklear was born on July 10, 1998, in North Carolina, USA. From the moment she entered the world, Danielle brought immense joy to her mother and her maternal grandparents. Her extended family included her great-grandmother, and especially her Aunt China, who cared for Danielle as if she were a younger sister. Danielle's family on her mother's side was large and young, so the age difference between her and China wasn't significant. While details about her parents' relationship remain unclear, it is known that after Danielle was born, her mother began a relationship with a man named Donnie Locklear. The new family moved to Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, and Danielle took on Donnie's last name. Living farther away, Danielle only spent time with her father's family during school holidays and special occasions. When her mother and Donnie's relationship ended, Danielle found comfort in her Aunt China and maternal grandparents. Over time, her biological father remarried, and her mother also remarried, this time to a man named John, who became a loving stepfather to Danielle. John embraced her as his own daughter, and his mother became a grandmother figure. Danielle's family continued to grow with three half-siblings, Donnie Ray Locklear Jr. on her mother's side, and Trey and Jazzling on her father's side. As Danielle advanced in school, it became clear that she was a charismatic and natural leader. Those who knew her recall her love for cooking and her eagerness to explore her artistic side. One of her favorite times of the year was visiting her grandmother's house. A particular story from her childhood highlights Danielle's deep compassion. During an elementary school science experiment, a strawberry plant was discarded, but Danielle rescued it and carefully nurtured it. She believed everything deserved a chance to live and took great care of the plant that summer. By 2013, Danielle was 15 years old and a freshman in high school. During a visit to North Carolina, she attended services at the Upper Room Prayer House with her family, where she met a young man named Jamichael Malloy. Jamichael was a senior at Fayetteville High School, planning to join the U.S. Navy after graduation. There was an undeniable attraction between Jamichael and Danielle, and they began dating that summer when Danielle stayed with her grandparents and aunt. As the summer ended, Danielle expressed a desire to transfer schools to stay in North Carolina, closer to her maternal family. She enrolled at Southview High School, where she felt especially comfortable in her nutrition and food classes. Baking cakes and trying new recipes became a passion for Danielle, and she also enjoyed gardening, despite teasing from some classmates. At the time, Danielle was considering a future as either a nurse or a chef. In matters of the heart, she was deeply in love with Jamaica, often filling her notebooks with his name. When Danielle introduced Jamaica to her family, they found him kind but somewhat introverted. However, as time passed, their relationship became tumultuous, with frequent ups and downs that their loved ones attributed to their youth and inexperience. Danielle began working as an art instructor at the Youth for Christ camp, where the children quickly became enchanted with her. By the end of 2013, Danielle's life seemed to be settling down in North Carolina. However, as time went on, Jamaica's interest in Danielle waned. Although he kept it a secret, he began flirting with other girls. On Sunday, March 9th, 2014, he broke up with Danielle. Heartbroken, Danielle told him she was pregnant, hoping it would make him reconsider. It wasn't true, but she was desperate to keep him in her life. Jamaica's reaction was not what she had hoped for, leading to a heated argument. He threatened to harm her if she tried to contact him again. 
Distraught, Danielle later confided in her friend Caroline about what had happened. At home, she had no one to turn to, as her aunt China and grandmother were in Atlanta for a medical checkup, leaving Danielle in the care of her grandfather. On Tuesday, March 11, 2014, Danielle met up with her friends at the Hope Mills Creek, a place where they could relax and have fun. That evening, she told her grandfather she needed to drop off some school notes to a classmate, but she wasn't going to her classmate's house. Instead, Danielle had arranged to meet Jamichael. Unbeknownst to her grandfather, Jamichael had installed a texting app that made it appear as though he was at home. Jamichael and his best friend Dominic arrived at the meeting spot with cement blocks and ropes in the trunk of their car. According to later reconstructions, Danielle and Jamichael argued, and he overpowered her, strangling her until she lost consciousness. He and Dominic then loaded her into the car, inadvertently dropping one of Danielle's socks in the underbrush. They drove to another part of the river, not far from Jamichael's home, where they tied cement blocks to her waist and disposed of her body in the water. In the early hours of Wednesday, March 12, 2014, Danielle's grandfather woke up to find her still not home. He contacted China and her grandmother, who immediately began their journey back to North Carolina. When they couldn't reach Danielle, they contacted the police to report her missing. The search for Danielle began, and her family and friends scoured the area, particularly near the creek, where China found Danielle's sock, raising their concerns. The police interviewed Jamaical, who claimed that Danielle had been so upset about their breakup that he had blocked her number. He insisted he hadn't spoken to her in days. Jamaical even claimed that he still loved her and had been at home the night she disappeared, willingly handing over his phone to the detectives. Forensic experts found text messages in which Danielle had told Jamaical she was pregnant. But despite mounting evidence, Jamaical continued to deny any involvement in Danielle's disappearance. As the investigation continued, Danielle's loved ones grew more desperate. Her best friend spoke with Jamichael on social media, where he mentioned how depressed he was feeling. On March 18, 2014, Jamichael took a polygraph test, which yielded unfavorable results, but he continued to deny any involvement. The detectives reviewed surveillance footage near the creek and requested Danielle's cell phone records, discovering that the last signal from her phone had been near a cell tower at 10.40 p.m. on the night she disappeared. On April 2, 2014, 28 days after Danielle's disappearance, an off-duty officer spotted a partially submerged body in the South River, about 20 miles from Hope Mills. Investigators arrived at the scene and recovered the body, which was later identified as Danielle. The autopsy revealed that Danielle had died from asphyxiation due to airway obstruction, and she was not pregnant. As Danielle's family grappled with the devastating news, the police focused on investigating her death as a violent crime. Jamichael became the prime suspect, especially after police found cement blocks and ropes similar to those used to weigh down Danielle at his residence. Four days later, Jamichael confessed to the crime. He had used an app to make it appear as though his text on the night of the crime had been sent from his home. On April 8, 2014, Jamaica was arrested and charged with second-degree murder, and Dominic was charged with conspiracy to commit a crime. On April 10, 2014, 250 students gathered for a vigil to pray for Danielle at Southview High School. Her best friend expressed her mixed emotions, torn between her Christian faith and the horror of what Jamaica had done. Despite her pain, she hoped to compete in the beauty pageant as a final tribute to Danielle. On April 20th, a memorial walk was organized in Danielle's honor, raising over $3,000 for her funeral services. On May 4th, Danielle's funeral was held, attended by her large, grieving family. The pastor spoke about the difficulty of losing a child, and Danielle was laid to rest in a private ceremony in Utreville. In 2016, Jamaical accepted a plea deal for second-degree murder, resulting in a sentence of 25 to 31 years. Dominic was sentenced to six to eight years for his role in the crime. As of now, Jamaica remains incarcerated with a projected release date of October 6, 2042. Danielle's mother shared that Jamaica had sent her several letters from prison, but she never opened them. Meanwhile, the strawberry plant that Danielle had nurtured with her grandmother 
continues to bloom each spring, symbolizing the love and kindness she brought into the world. That's the end of today's case. Thank you for joining us on The Crime Storyteller. If you're interested in more intriguing true crime stories, especially from Latin America, be sure to check out our new channel, Latin Crimes. Click the link to subscribe and explore more mysteries with us. See you next time.